Good evening everyone. NMU and Michigan Tech Volleyball are back in the UP. They meet for the second time this season. The Wildcats defeated the Huskies three sets to one back in September. Tech was hoping for some home court advantage tonight at the SDC gym. Pick up the action in the first set. NMU took the first point. Aubrey Fisek is looking for a kill, but she is denied by Alex Larson and Anna Acock, and the Wildcats pick up that point. Then with Acock serving, Rose Almond to Sylvie Rokosh, and that one hits the floor. Rokosh had four kills on the night, but the Wildcats would start to open up the set. Megan Seymour sets Lisa Studnicka, and that one is down. It almost looked like a facial. 8-2 Wildcats. Huskies battling back. Aubrey Havlicek gets a point for Michigan Tech right there with the tip, but they still trailed 9-4. Talk about some interesting moves. Alex Berger, doink, just kind of plops that one to the far side of the court, hits the line, and the Wildcats are now up 19-6. Berger with another very good dig. Acock earns one of her 10 kills on the night. 25-15, Northern won the first set, and they won the next two as well to take the match. Three sets to none. Meanwhile, over in Marquette in high school volleyball, Reddit's taking on Escanaba, and Hunter Vidala finds the perfect location for that kill. Marquette takes an 8-7 lead in the second set. Marquette won the first. For the Eskimos, Rebecca Piron gets the return set from Alyssa Polquin, and the Libero puts enough mustard on it that Marquette can't quite make a successful response. Marquette, though, gets a turn next. Alex Hillier to Martha Storm. Morgan Ledbetter gets a favorable bounce off the net. Redettes lead 10-8. Time for a math equation for the Eskimos. Number seven, Rebecca Puron. To number 18, Alyssa Polquin equals number 25, Tara Straw for the kill. 11-9, Marquette still in front. And Marquette would regain the momentum again. Catherine Skenzel, Storm, Vidala for one of her 18 kills. Marquette up 12-9. Marquette won the second set and the third to take the match three sets to none. The final Upper Peninsula Sports Writers and Sportscasters Association High School football poll is pretty tight, just like the past few weeks. Not many clear choices out there between the teams and the panel voting. Postseason might be needed to solve some of these questions. Now, one voter changed his mind on the thinking, and Menominee moved into the top spot, one point ahead of Ishpeming, 32-31. The Maroons have four first-place votes, Ishpeming with three. Marquette is third, followed by West Iron County, Iron Mountain fifth, Calumet and Sault Ste. Marie also receive votes from the panel. Little school poll, well, the playoffs may decide that voting. It's very, very tight. Forest Park with three first place votes is first. St. Ignace and Munising are tied for second. 29 for Forest Park, 27 for the Saints and the Mustangs. Barker for Harrison, Lakeland and Hubble are tied for fourth place with 11 each. And Barker for Harris visits the Lakes on Saturday. Eight-man football, Rapid River and Cedarville remain the top two teams. A rematch lurking next week. Northern Michigan University senior diver Molly Carney was named the Gliac Swimming and Diving Athlete of the Week after sweeping the one and three meter diving events against Minnesota State. Carney opened the two-day event, setting two new PEIF pool diving records. Her one-meter score was 289.45, and the three-meter score was 304.15. The Wildcats beat Minnesota State Mankato twice, and the Wildcats swimming and diving team will next compete Saturday, November 8th at home when they host Saginaw Valley State at 11 in the morning. Hockey great Gordy Howe has lost some function on the right side of his body after having a stroke Sunday in Texas. Howe's daughter Kathy says the 86-year-old Red Wings legend has lost much of the use of his right arm and right leg. Howe suffered the stroke in Lubbock, Texas, where his daughter lives. Howe's daughter said today his speech is slurred, but he's been looking at family pictures and pictures from his playing days, and he's able to recognize and identify people he played with. She said his three sons were on their way to Texas to see him. And don't forget, all kinds of information is available on our website at UpperMichiganSource.com. It's a final, Carl. It's a final, says Carl Bonak. 10-0 Royals over the San Francisco Giants, so there will be a Game 7 of the World Series tomorrow night. Yeah, that's what a lot of people, I think, want to see. So who's going to pitch for San Francisco? Are they going to bring Baumgartner out again? And, I would think that's yeah. exactly what they should do. Oh, it's going to be a good game. Yes. All right, thanks a lot, Mike.